hey, maybe it was a butt dial, huh? Tell the Justice Department that. Ah, but there was a bombshell. Are you ready for this? Uh, apparently, Donald Trump made a phone call and nobody answered it, but they're acting like this is a big deal. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here, and the thinnest lies in human history have surely been uttered in the name of politics. And Newsmax is undoubtedly the breeding ground for the thinnest, shallowest, and most hollow lies in the history of politics. Literally, the one-stop channel for the dumbest lies of all time. President Trump tried to call a witness in our investigation. A witness you have not yet seen in these hearings. That person declined to answer or respond to President Trump's call and instead alerted their lawyer to the call. And despite the best efforts of their makeup team, Greg Kelly exhibits the deepest shade of brown on his nose every time he talks about Donald Trump. He just offered up the comedic softball when he suggested that Trump's phone call to a witness was possibly just a butt dial. We will take any effort to influence witness testimony very seriously. <laughs> you have no authority. You're a joke committee. You have no authority. By the way, uh, not to drop names, but I've received a phone call from the president on more than one occasion, and you actually can't tell it's him calling. He's got some system you don't know. How do you know the president actually called and they didn't answer? Hey, maybe it was a butt dial, huh? Tell the Justice Department that. Okay. In the civil realm, witness tampering is a serious crime. But thanks to a culture where we evidently let politicians walk all over us and we buy any BS spin they offer up, a whopper like Kelly's butt dial excuse gets TV time. And come on, this isn't even an attempt at an excuse. It's a plea of insanity. It's also an act of gloating. They think they own their audience so completely that they don't even need rationality to sway the minds of their listeners. And I'm praying that that's not true in modern America. Because we're way too good for this. We could be anything that we want to be. We don't have to have leaders who need to cook up excuses to cover their corruption on a constant basis. If we want to, we could elect leaders who would shut their mouths and just do their jobs. But instead, we elected a big mouth reality TV personality, and despite kicking him to the curb in 2020, we're still paying for it today. And we're going to keep paying for it for a long time to come. Teddy Roosevelt said, speak softly but carry a big stick, while Donald Trump went the exact opposite opposite direction. Talk big game and you don't have to do anything at all. And the all talk and no action blueprint has been replicated by the right wing media as a way to protect their golden cow. Greg Kelly and Newsmax take this to absolute comic levels and it would be laugh out loud funny if not for how sad and dire the situation really is. Because the outcome of the January 6 hearings will hold repercussions far greater and will last far longer than Donald Trump ever will. The entire point of the American system of justice is to prosecute crimes, not people. Donald Trump should be convicted because he's guilty of a crime, not because he's a political figure. And because he's a political figure, we should all the more see him convicted of his crime to prove our American system of justice. If you are guilty of a crime, you should be convicted, regardless of how many people are absorbed with your personality or how influential your ability to manipulate is. America is America because authority is based on objective principles, principles that are equal to everyone regardless of your stature in society. Remember, justice is blind, and that's a beautiful thing. But is it still true? Those are the foundational questions that will be answered at the outcome of these hearings. The foundational questions at the foot of Merrick Garland and the questions before us as a society and how we look at our politicians. Do we look at political figures as heroes who dictate right and wrong to us or as our employees who we hold to standards of job performance and core ethics? When these people take an oath of office, what does that even mean anymore? It's all of these questions that will be answered in consequence of these hearings and will shape America for years to come. And that's a fact. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.